Hey there, good morning. Let's have a look at a 1968 vintage Summon Honing Machine model MBB 1600. Now this is one of the last uh, all cast iron machines. Got a cast iron base here. And it's quite heavy. I don't know how much it weighs. More than a thousand pounds anyway, I think. I can move it with that uh, RV jack pretty good. It's got a tank inside here. Pull the covers off. And it says use honing oil only. <laughs> and you probably should. I don't know. I use uh, sun and honing oil. MB 30, I think it is. Now this thing has an oil pump. Let me loosen the other side. You can loosen both sides and maybe get a little more light in there. Have a fiberglass cover. But it holds 15 gallons. And uh, here's the settling tanks here, these two tanks. And uh, the, the oil drains. Uh, through a tube here in the tray down into uh, this first tank here then it spills over then it settles in there then uh, then spills over into the regular reservoir there's an oil pump down here driven by these cords here see there's the top of it these idler pulleys and it's a round uh, uh, belt it goes all the way up to the motor up here. All the way down there to the oil pump. And it's got an oil control rod right there. You see you can control the, control the flow. So that's uh, pretty much there. This, uh, this right here, if you unscrew that, <laughs> all the oil will drain out on the floor. Now, this one's got a really kind of neat drive system here. It's a two-speed um, flat belt. And uh, they, they changed this uh, later on, kind of simplified it. But uh, here, it, it's in, it'd be in low speed. The, uh, the actuating levers here actuate where you pull it. That's this giz gizmos here that come up here. This uh, white band here is the brake. It's the cloth brake. Let me adjust it there. So when you light up, it, it, it breaks the spindle. Then if you, let, if you push down just slightly, see it loosens the brake there? Then you can rotate the spindle real easily. Just pushing down slightly there. Okay, now the way this works, there's a knob here that you uh, um, adjust for uh, um, how much you want to remove. Uh, you load the machine with this knob, and uh, it's got a screw here, and it works this uh, lever thing here. See? See that? It's all the way out, all the way in. And then it pushes in here, and that uh, pushes the stones in. So when you push the pedal down, see it pushes all that in a little bit more. Then there's a, a, a idler wheel here that pushes in and then tightens the belt. And then the machine runs. I don't have it hooked up right now because I'm moving it. Now that's for uh, low speed. For high speed, kind of unique on this uh, old one, you flip this lever up and it uh, moves the, the inner pulley in. See? No, then I'll push the, uh, I'll push the lever down here. And then it tightens the high speed belt, and uh, the low speed belt here is loose. Eh? 
Um, this uh, machine goes to 1600 RPM, and uh, that'd be for a very, very tiny uh, um, hone. They say up to uh, 350 thousandths diameter for uh, 1600 RPM, but uh, that'd be pretty quick, I think. So there's your speed range there. And they tell you what to do here. I'm going to go over and service this and uh, uh, do all the little adjustments. So this machine's all intact. It's got, got the guards. It's even got this uh, tray that slips into here that uh, has a drain that uh, drains back into the tank. At least it's supposed to. It doesn't look like it does. It looks like it drips on the floor. So that's that end of it. So we'll come over here and uh, I'll push the uh, lever down. I'll let it up. Now I'm going to back this up here. And the stones will push back in. And I'm going to put a chewing sleeve on there. Now I'll push the lever down. And then turn the knob here. And you see the dial comes up. I'll give it a full turn of the dial. Now I'll let up on the lever. See? Now you can pull this uh, chewing sleeve off. Now there's... Uh, spring pressure on the stones here and uh, this model has uh, I think this is when they introduced the uh, light spring pressure dial up here like the the earlier historic models the 1290d and it doesn't have this upper part okay let's talk about spring pressure and uh, the spring pressure is controlled by two dials. Uh, this is the heavy spring pressure. And this one is the light spring pressure dial. Now, I, I mentioned earlier machines will only have this. And uh, I think this is mostly for those very tiny um, um, 16th inch hones you run real fast. <laughs> Uh, but this dial here generally does everything, but I do, I do use this on, on when, it, when it's appropriate. This uh, machine is, is pretty much everything goes by feel with it in a lot of ways. It's kind of an interesting machine in that way. And uh, it's the most accurate machine I have. Uh, again, a sun on, on this machine with like a P mandrel. This is uh, a P style mandrel. Uh, uh, guarantees uh, 50 millionths accuracy yeah. uh, and that's uh, really uh, that's half a tenth and that's <laughs> that's real doable uh, the clowns on the internet forums uh, say you can't even measure that well some of has something to say about that you know and I think people that uh, work close tolerance is no better than the nonsense that uh, goes on on those forums, and particularly on the Monarch 10 E Lathe, <laughs> the most ridiculous uh, stuff I've ever seen. Well, anyway, this is kind of like uh, uh, an odd machine. <laughs> now, the spring pressure is applied through this. And here, you know, this is what drives, uh, what, what moves the stones out. So when you increase the spring pressure, you really feel it on the work. It wants to turn, turn the work. And, uh, and again, it's kind of a, a, a thing by feel. You can tell if you have too much spring pressure, you, you can't hold on to the part. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's a given there. So I thought it might be interesting to kind of have a look at the mechanism of uh, this model. And it's really quite complicated in a way, but yet, yet very simple. The, uh, the machine uh, has been around a long, long time in many configurations. 
but they all seem to do the same thing. You know, they have bench mounted, uh, where there's only this part of it with a motor sit on, sitting on it. And uh, some of the early ones uh, didn't have uh, the uh, adjustment for uh, trueness of uh, the mandrel running, which isn't that big a deal. It's just nice to have it running pretty true, especially if you're running that kind of fast, you know. So uh, you, you adjust it like an adjust uh, true chuck with the uh, four screws here. And you can get it to uh, get the mandrel to run true. What I do is just stick a chilling sleeve on it and uh, put a little pressure on it to hold the sleeve and uh, put an indicator on the sleeve. That's all you need to do. But that's how that works. Now I also can put a drill chuck in there, and uh, this is an adapter. I can put a small lathe chuck, uh, uh, bench lathe size chucks, um, in there to hold uh, work for uh, lapping and things like that. And also uh, external work, and also uh, I run uh, internal uh, barrel laps like this uh, with that chuck. It's kind of nice to keep the uh, all the abrasives here with this machine because it's it's designed to uh, to uh, handle that. Someone asked about this uh, mat in the tray, and that's all it is. It's just a mat uh, made of springs, and it keeps stuff uh, up, and the, you know the oil flows flows under. It's a messy machine. I'm going to take and wipe it down real good now that I got it out, then go ahead and uh, um, go through the service uh, procedures. Sunnit's a really good company, and you deal with them direct. There's no Sunnit retailers, so uh, it's a company you uh, just call them up, and uh, they'll do the best they can to help you. They don't really support these old machines real well. Um, I don't know if they have... Uh, much for parts, but there's not much to go wrong. You know, if something does go wrong, you probably make it. Um, they uh, didn't have a manual for this old one. They gave me a manual for a newer one, but they really haven't changed very much. There's just not much change in them. So that's uh, uh, about all I know about the Sun and Hound. And I guess there's just not a whole lot to know about it. But this is the... Uh, Model, let's stand back here. Have to stand back. <laughs> the model MBB 1600 Sun and Honing Machine, uh, about 1968. Well, the sun's coming up out there, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, get a little more progress in moving that um, axe and lathe in here. Okay, I'll be back later, and uh, you guys have a good day, okay? Bye-bye.